Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ABS Video Editor 8.0 tutorial. This is part 5 of the series and in this video we will be covering the details of how to edit and use audio in your videos. If you haven't seen part 1 of this series, I would recommend you take a look at it so you can get a better feel of what we'll be talking about in today's video. So let's go ahead and get started with the areas that we'll be dealing with today, which are the two audio mix lines at the bottom of the editing board. So if we scroll down here, we'll notice our two audio mix lines. This is where you can add your imported audio to overlay the sound of your video. And we have a few different ways of importing audio, and the first way to import your audio is through your media library. So we are in our media library right now. We're going to go into our sample folder into the audio tab, because we're only dealing with audio today. And if you go ahead and press the button right here that says import, you can import all sorts of different audio types. So if we go ahead and press it, we can go ahead and import different audio. So we have different sound effects we can choose from here. Let's just go ahead and import this audio clip. Now our audio clip is in our media library. It's where we can select it, click, hold, and drag it onto one of our audio mix lines. Now remember, if you guys saw my basic video, part one, discussed that the audio lines are the exact same thing. They can both hold audio files. So we just drag that song right there. Let's go ahead and add the one we just imported onto the line right under it, like so. So now we have two different audio files on both lines. The lines are the exact same thing. Now you notice when I apply it to the timeline, the sound waves of the clip automatically showed up there. So if I go ahead and just zoom in on the clip, you can see the different sound waves throughout the clip, which are in a darker shade right there. And just like any other AVS object in this editor, we can change the duration of the clip by selecting the clip and holding our cursor over one of the ends of it. We can click and drag it to left or right to change the duration of the clip like so. One of the main things we're going to be focusing on in today's video is adjusting the audio levels between audio tracks. So let's go ahead and add a video clip that has audio to it. I'm going to do this by locking those lines going into our video tab and this one has audio to it so we'll just drag it onto our main video line and you notice the sound waveforms pop up right there as well so right now we're going to be adjusting the audio levels between all three of these clips here and we can do that by pressing this button right here which is the volume and balance button if we click this button we are prompted with a new menu to where we can adjust the different audio levels between tracks so this top one up here is used for the main video line and so right now everyone is set to equal amount at 100 percent but we can increase the main video line to be about 175 percent we can decrease if we had a video overlay with an audio track on it uh, this would also be an option to increase or decrease its balance compared to the other clips and this last line here is used for both audio mix lines this song right here and the sound effect on both of these audio lines adjusting this will affect both of those lines so if we decrease it to about 50 or so both audio mix lines are now at 50 percent of its capacity compared to 100 percent on the video overlay line and compared to about 175 percent on the main video line and this applies it to the entire clip so the main video line is much louder than our audio mix lines and that is one way you can balance out or make certain clips louder than the other using the volume and balance button right here. So let's say you want to adjust your audio levels to be specifically louder or specifically softer at certain points in the clip. You can do this by using what's called the envelope feature. So each audio track shown in this editing board has what's called an envelope that will depict the volume control of that clip. So if I select this clip right here, this red line running through the middle of the clip is what's called the envelope feature. It actually controls how loud or how soft the clip is. You can alter this envelope clip by holding your mouse over the red line and clicking and holding, dragging it up or down. Of course, dragging it up will make it louder, dragging it down will make it softer. For now, we're going to keep it right in the middle so that we can do some more cool things with it. One of those cool things is that you can add certain control points to be able to fluctuate between the different volume levels in the clip. Let's kind of describe what that means a little bit. I'm going to zoom in on this clip right here the song that we have on the top audio line. What I mean by you can add control points is if you hover your mouse over one point that you want to add a control point, you hover your mouse over it and you double click. And you notice I just added a point right there. What that point means is that it indicates a new change in volume in that clip. And you can move this point across the entire envelope by holding your mouse over it, clicking and holding and dragging it. So now this point is wherever my mouse is. And you can see the envelope kind of move on its own. So if I drag this point, you notice that the point is at its peak now but there's also a point at the start of the envelope so now this clip with what i put my control point as is going to increase in volume up to that control point and it looks like it's going to slowly decrease to the last control point at the end of the song so we can add multiple control points to this let's go ahead and do that we can add a control point right here i'll just double click it and i'll click hold and drag this control point to be right there so now in this clip it's going to increase in volume and then once it hits that control point, it's going to dramatically decrease and then just kind of level out at the end there. And we can add tons and tons of control points and do some really cool um, audio volume equalization and volume balancing using these control points by just double clicking on the envelope and changing the location of them either horizontally or vertically. So let's say you've been messing with all these control points and you're just having a tough time getting it. 
and things just don't sound right for you and you want to start over. If you want to start over, you want to get rid of all these control points, you can right click the clip and press the button that says reset envelope. It'll bring everything back to normal. The red line will be directly in the middle of the clip and there are no more control points that you added. So that is essentially how you can add different control points and how you can adjust specific points in your audio clip to be certain volumes and you can kind of balance it out like that. So the second way we can import audio media is by recording it from a device such as a microphone. So we can record our voice using AVS. We can find that in what's called the voice tab right here. This is where you are allowed to commentate as the main video is playing. So once you're in the voice tab, you can set up all sorts of different settings. We can go through each of these settings in the different tabs here. The volume tab, the master volume is automatically set to auto volume and I would recommend it to stay at auto volume, but you can increase or decrease the volume of the microphone or recording device that you are using. You also have the source tab so you can change the auto device that you're using. So we have this microphone right here. We have different types of webcams. You can record it from your computer directly and of course you can change the sources as well and if you just plugged in a new device you can press the refresh button and it will check for new devices on your computer then we have the format tab here and you can change the different formats with which you would like your recording to be in so you can make it an mp3 WMA, wma pcm files and you can change the frequency with which you want so a mono or stereo and of course you can change your bit rate and channels as well so another option that we have here as you can set a delay recording, once you press start recording there will be a slight delay. You can also have a time limit to your recording, so if you only want it to be a minute long you can set that as well. And you can mute your player as well. So if you have all your options set up, you have your sources, your formats, and your different options, and your master volumes, anything that you would prefer with your different settings, you have it all set up. All you have to do is press the start recording button. Now you have to be mindful that when you press the start recording button, the main video line is going to start playing. So that audio is also going to be playing as well it's basically going to be a commentation. You're going to be commentating the main video, which also means that you cannot use the voice record option if there are no clips on the main video line. You have to have some sort of object in your main editing board or your main video line to actually be recording. You also have to be mindful that wherever you're recording, the audio is going to be automatically outputted to this very bottom line called the voice recording line, which is kind of why there are two different audio mix lines. So I'm going to go ahead and press start recording here. Right now I'm recording, you can kind of hear the audio in the background, which is a little bit loud. And I press stop right there. So, you just saw my recording be outputted to this bottom light here, and it's called recording with the date and the time on it. It is imported onto the audio recording line at the very bottom here, and this is where you can edit and move it around as you please. Now the actual audio file that you created is saved into the AVS Video Editor temporary folder. And if you want to listen to just your recording, you can go into your media library, and you'll notice that the recording that you just did is imported into your media library automatically. So we can go ahead and listen to what I just recorded. Right now I'm recording. You can kind of hear the audio in the background, which is a little bit loud. And so that was the recording that we just made. It is automatically imported into your media library to where you can add multiple copies of it. And that is essentially the voice tab. It's pretty straightforward, pretty intuitive. All you gotta do is set your source to the microphone that you're using. Go ahead and press start recording. Your main video is gonna start playing to where you can start commentating and recording your own voice. Once you've added all of your audio to your lines, you now have the option to edit and add effects to those audio clips. And you can do this by selecting the video or audio clip that you want to edit, and then click on the audio button which appears right here. Or you can also right click the said clip and press the audio button as well. Remember you can change the audio on all sorts of clips, so like this video clip right here, it also has an audio option. So we're going to go ahead and start editing this song right here by clicking it and then pressing the audio button. And a new window will appear to where you can select the different audio effects that you want to apply. Now a lot of these settings that you can change here are pretty complicated and you're probably going to be hearing some terminology that you've probably never heard before. But what's important about these is that you can preview your clip as you change these settings. Just go ahead and play around with them. Uh, they might be a little bit difficult to understand right away and through the dictionary terms. But with a lot of experience and with a lot of just trial and error using these settings, uh, you'll learn exactly what they do. So the first setting that we have up here is called the Amplify setting. And this one is pretty straightforward. It's probably the easiest out of all of them to understand. The Amplify effect just lets you to amplify your audio recording as you wish. So right now the gain is set to 3. But I must point out that you actually have to press the checkbox for that setting to be applied. If it is not checked, those changes that you made to the clip will not be applied. So now that we have our checkbox checked, we can change the gain. So right now we can make it a negative 38, which means that the song is going to be really soft. You probably can't even hear that. We're going to put it at zero right now. So you can hear it right there. And I'll increase it to as loud as it can be at 12. 
left and you hear it's kind of loud and a little bit distorted at that point. But there are also, in each of these settings, there are presets to them. So the presets for this one, you can have a 10 decibel boost or a 10 decibel cut, a 6 decibel boost, 6 decibel cut. You can apply these as well, which are some good presets to mess with to kind of get some perspective. So that is the amplify setting. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this so that it does not affect the preview of the other settings. The next setting we have here is the noise removal setting. And the noise removal effect lets the user attenuate the noise sound of a certain frequency based on the fast Fourier transformation. That might be a little bit difficult to understand, but I'll just give you a preview of what we're at. So we're going to go ahead and check the checkbox and I'll just increase this reduce slide bar a little bit up and I'll let you hear about what it sounds like. You hear it kind of sounds a little bit lossy and a little bit compressed. If we press the 1024 and increase it even more, you can hear some really significant changes in the song. So that's what the noise removal setting does. Again, you have to experiment with these to actually kind of see what they do. The next setting that we have here is called the equalizer setting. And this one is probably something that people are more familiar with. So the equalizer filter is used to change the frequency pattern of the audio file. And it's used to attenuate some of the frequencies and amplify other frequencies. This one's a little bit more easier to understand. And if you don't understand, just go ahead and take a look at the presets. They will help you understand. So in the presets, we have a gentle boost. You can increase the bass and the treble and the mid-range of your audio clips using an equalizer. So in the presets we have a gentle boost. If we can click that you can see some sort of frequencies change in the mid-range of the frequencies. We can change high it to high bass. So now the bass is increased to a much higher. We can make it a low bass. We can increase we can decrease the bass to a, having a low bass. We can have super bass to make the bass super super loud. We can have a toneless high bass and a toneless low bass. And again you can mess with all of these. So we're going to set it to super bass you can hear the song kind of change. You can hear the bass really loud on that one. It's almost distorted. So I'm going to make these a little bit exaggerated. I'm going to exaggerate the higher frequencies of this clip and kind of make a wave pattern in the equalizer. So there's our dramatic increase in frequencies in the high and low end. You can hear the difference right away. You can cer certainly hear the increase in the high frequencies and the low frequencies. Let's go ahead and just decrease the low frequencies. Now you can just hear the high frequencies in that. So go ahead and mess with the equalizer. That is something a little bit more easier to understand uh, using the different frequencies in it. But the next effect that we would like to do with is called the normalize effect. And the normalize effect is used to achieve the greatest amount of amplification that won't result in clipping of your audio. So let's just go ahead and give you a preview over here. It will amplify your clip, but it's not going to distort it. So you notice that when we were mess with this one, we amplified it, there was some distortion in it. <laughs> You can kind of hear that distortion right there. But if we go into the normalize and we increase it like that, you have the bias adjust option. So if we increase it, there shouldn't be too much distortion. So the clip is actually louder. It's not as distorted. And let's go ahead and play a bass part of the song. So the normalize kind of adjusts and compensates for that distortion that might, uh, might happen for the amplification. It just kind of cleans up that dirty work that comes with it. The next effect that we're going to be dealing with is called the compressor. And this one's a little bit difficult to explain, so I'm going to do my best here. But the compressor is a variable gain device where the amount of gain used depends on the level of the input. So in this case, the gain will be reduced when the signal level is high. That makes the louder passages softer, reducing the dynamic range. This effect equals to dynamic volume regulator. It makes loud sound quieter and the quiet sound louder. So it's kind of cool how it works. Uh, the compressor is something a little bit difficult to understand, but again, play with these settings and see how they actually change. So we have the compressor, hard compressor per voice. Let's go ahead and turn that on. You can see the ratio kind of increase in the threshold did. So not too much change there. If we go ahead and decrease the threshold all the way down, not much change there. If we increase the ratio all the way up, you can't really hear anything at all. <laughs> we'll go ahead and decrease that back down. You can hear it back again. Increase the RMS all the way up. Again, not much change there. But if we change the post amplify right here, again, nothing much at all because we decrease the amplification of it. But go ahead and mess with the presets here. So we'll limit it to negative one decibel. Not much change going on there, but again, the compressor has some cool settings that can affect your audio to do some cool effects. And the last effect we'll be dealing with today is called the pitch shift effect. And what it does is that it shifts the frequency spectrum of the input signal. It's basically used to disguise a person's voice and just kind of make it sound really weird. So if I go ahead and change the pitch shift of this, let's go ahead and increase this to a higher number there. 
see it kind of sounds pretty creepy when we increase it. And if we decrease it, we'll see kind of the opposite effect. Which it does sound pretty cool. We have different presets here. We can make it bass sounding. Which is pretty cool. We can make it helium sounding. And we can make it soprano sounding. Which is pretty cool using with the pitch shift. That one's a really fun one to use, especially with your voice. So let's go ahead and try that on a voice, actually, since we do have a recording. So we'll go ahead and select the clip, press the audio button, and the menu will show up. I'll press the pitch shift button, and we'll decrease and see what my voice sounds like. So that's what it does to your voice, which is interesting if we increase it all the way. See if we sound like Darth Vader. Right now I'm recording. You can kind of hear the audio in the background, which is a little bit loud. So that's pretty interesting how the pitch shift will work on different voices. But we'll go back into this clip and start editing the audio. So you'll notice that in that recording clip that I just edited, a little icon appears in the top left of the clip. It's kind of a gray icon that it shows kind of a speaker with the star in the middle of it. That means that you edited the audio to th that clip. So if we go back into the editing menu of this clip, we have an option here which says apply to all occurrences. So that means all occurrences of this file is going to be applied the effects that you added to it. So if we go ahead and press that and press OK, you will notice that the two other recordings that we have, which are the exact same recording, now have the effects that I just edited on that one clip, which is really, really convenient if you have multiple of the same clip and you don't want to go into each one applying the exact same settings over and over. You just have to do it once, press the Apply to All Occurrences button, and that will make it so that all of your settings are applied to each of the same clip. One thing I forgot to mention real quick when you're editing your audio is that you can also apply a fade in and fade out to the effects. So I must point out that this is not a fade in and fade out to the volume of the audio. It's only a fade in and fade out to the actual settings that you have changed. So let's go ahead and apply a gain, an increase of gain, and an increase in pitch shift. If that's what we have here. And of course, each fade in and fade out is relative to each effect. So you notice I'm in the amplify setting right now. You notice that the fade in and fade out is different than that of the pitch shift. So each one has its own individual fade in and fade out. We're both going to apply a fade in and fade out to each of them, kind of similar. So if we go ahead and play it, you'll see how they slowly start to fade in. Well, actually, we'll set that fade in and fade out to be a little bit more in the middle so we can hear a dramatic change. So you can kind of hear the, the increase and decrease throughout the fade in. It did not change the actual volume throughout the video. It only increased and decreased the transition of the settings that we have. So that is essentially all of the settings of how to edit your audio. There's one last thing I'm going to cover in this video, which is how to extract audio from video clips. And you can do this within your media library. So if we go into our video section, let's say this clip right here, which has audio in the clip, we really want that audio to be extracted into our file system. You can do this by selecting the clip, right clicking it, and then pressing the option which says extract audio. When you press this option, you have the ability to export the audio within your video and create it a file format. You can save it as an mp3 or a WAV file. You can save it as that and it will export the audio from that clip. And of course, once it's finished exporting the audio, it is automatically imported into your media library, which is right here. And we can click and drag it onto our audio line and there is our exported audio clip. So there you guys have it. That is part 5 of the ABSB Editor 8.0 tutorial. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video of us covering the details of how to edit and use audio in AVS. If you guys did enjoy this video and if you guys did learn something, go ahead and subscribe for more ABS View Editor 8.0 tutorials coming your way. And I will see you guys.